Hebrews chapter 4, and I want us to read verses 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two urged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, uh -huh. and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. My goodness. May God bless the reading of his word. I hope you know that the time the apostles were writing this, they did not have what you and I have today called the Bible. I must bring you to that understanding because sometimes we miss revelation because we always think some people to walk with God ahead what we have. So I hope you know that when the apostles wrote and said what they said, they did not have what you and I call the Bible meaning they did not have something to walk around with. They did not have something to hold on to. But the Bible says, for the word of God is quick and powerful. Then a question should come from a critical thinker and the question should be, what word of God? Or rather, what is the word of God? These people wrote what they wrote, but they never had the Bible. You see, a lot of Christians today, they cannot see the power that is in the word of God because what they call the word of God is not the word of God. In order for us to understand what the word of God is in our time, we then need to go back and understand what the word of God was to the apostles. And the apostles we are talking about, they never had the Bible. What they had back then in the temples, in the synagogue, were scrolls. That's why the Bible then says in the book of Luke chapter 4, and they gave unto Jesus a scroll. And he read where it said, the spirit of God is upon me. But notice if you may, after he read that part, he gave it back. So in the olden days, what they had were scrolls. But people did not have scrolls in their houses. So you will read and you will return it. Say amen. amen. But Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 says the word of God is quick. The word of God is powerful. Then the question should arise and the question should be, what is the word of God? Because today's Christians are taught something else. That's why they don't see manifestations. I hope you know that this was the after Math of the exploits that the, the apostles did. What that means is the Bible is a combination of the apostles' experiences. So while they were experiencing God, they did not have a Bible. You have to hear me here. If you can't hear me here, you can't hear me where I'm going. But still, we hear the apostles saying the word of God is powerful. 
yet they had no bible imagine yourself without the bible will you have something to talk about will you look at people and say the word of god is powerful because people will ask you which word of god some of you can't talk about the word of god outside the bible because you don't know what the word of god is the apostles who wrote the bible talked about the word of god before the bible was put together in order for us to know the word of god today we then need to understand and know the word of god according to the revelation of the apostles let's read hebrews again in account of three we all read one two three for the word of god is quick uh -huh. and powerful mm -hmm. and sharper than any two-edged sword my goodness so what is the word of god is it the bible is it what we say is it a statement is it a verse is it a charm is it a letter is it what people preach about what is the word of god what exactly does the bible call the word of god john 1 1 let's go in the beginning was what the word and the word was with who god and the word was god if you are new life a new life member you know that the first passage there of in the beginning was the word talks about the pre-existence of the word and when the bible says and the word was with god the bible there talks about the core existence of the word so we have the pre-existence of the word and we have the core existence of the word but i want you to pay attention to what john is saying here because i know we know the scripture but let's pay attention today he says in the beginning was the word somebody say in the beginning was the word but I want you to look at what he says at the end. He says, and the word was God. So he starts by saying, in the beginning was the word. And he ends by saying, and the word was God. So in the beginning was the word. And the word was God. So what is the word of God? The word of God, number one, is the manifestation of of god himself the manifestation of god himself the greek word for the word word there is logos somebody say logos, logos. now i'm sure we are familiar with logos and rema <laughs> i believe every christian knows that there is logos and there is rema but where do we get logos? We get logos in John 1 1. So when the Bible says, In the beginning was the word, the right translation says, In the beginning in Greek was logos. So in order for me to understand the word, I need to understand the original meaning of the word. Because we all know that most uh, parts in the New Testament were written in greek of course and in aramaic aramaic and of course you have hebrew there but hebrew mainly in the old testament so the word logos i know we we have our own definitions but the right definition of the word logos is the thoughts and the intents of god the thoughts and the intents of god that's why you'll hear people say your word is who you are meaning your word is an expression of your thoughts so the thoughts and the intents of god 
is what we call logos. So if we were to now simplify everything, number one, the word of God or the word is the manifestation of God himself. Number two, the word is logos, meaning the thoughts and the intents of God. That's now another definition of the word of God. Number three, the word of God is a revelation of his ways. It's a revelation of his ways. And every time you study scriptures, brothers and sisters, to learn the ways of God, there are three things you are going to find. There are three things you are going to come across. So every time you dive in, in the word or dive into the word in an attempt to learn and to understand the ways of God, everyone here, if you jump into the scriptures, let's say jumping in as if one is jumping in, diving into a swimming pool. So if you were to dive in and jump into the word of God in an attempt to learn the ways of God, in a sense of I'm jumping in because I want to know and learn the ways of God. There are three things you are going to come across inside that pool called the word of God. And as long as you don't know these things, you'll be everywhere but no way. Number one, number one, the promises of God. So the first thing I'm going to see as I learn the ways of God is the promises of God. Number two, principles. Number three, prophecies. And of course, the promises speaks of God's commitment towards you. So that's what the promises are about. God's commitment towards you. Number two, which are the principles. So the principles are the keys of the kingdom that are responsible for your rising. Meaning as long as I do not know the principles that are connected to the promise that I'm trying to walk in, I will not experience those promises. So God gave principles after he gave promises. And of course, prophecies speaks of foreknowledge of things that will happen to give you hope and to give you assurance. That's why the Bible says Christ in us, the hope of glory. Hebrews chapter 11, because of time, if we can be fast a little bit, it will help a lot on my side. In a count of three, we read, one, two, three. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Uh -huh. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So the word of God, according to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3, is God's creative power. Meaning the word of God is God's ability to create. So without the word, God does not have the ability to create. Yes. That's why John says, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. So without the word, God does not have the ability to create. So God creates because of his word. So what is the word of God? God's creative power. God's ability to create. So what is to create? To create from earth's definition is to make something out of nothing. That's earth's definition. But according to the realms of the spirit, to create means... To transport realities and make them manifest here on earth. So according to the spirit realm, to create is to transport what? Realities from the spirit realm and manifest them into the physical realm. So the word of God, according to the definition of the spirit, is a transporter. It's a vehicle. That carries realities in the spirit. That's what the word of God is, right? And brings them to the physical. Your problem is this. 
You know culture. You know sermons. But you don't know the word of God. You see, because of culture, you are always using spirituality as an illusion not to face reality. don't know the word of God they know culture because once you know the word of God you'll understand that the word of God is a transporter of realities from the spirit to the physical so once you have that in your spirit when you look at the word of God you see God's creative power something that always transports what is unseen to the scene that's what the word of God is so once you know that your approach changes